everyone. This is uh, Walter Bound, and I'm here with... I'm Nancy Bound. And we're talking about... What are we talking about today, oh, We should test the sound first, so... Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, so the sound sounds fine. So Nancy, do you want to talk about your first song? Yeah, so we have... Uh, previously, we have compiled a list of, of cover songs that we'd like to discuss, and an overall, like, a pretty good playlist, and that really brings you to think, like, what is the meaning and why do a cover song? Yeah, what makes a good cover song? <sighs> I'd say, you know, of course, it, like paying homage to the like original composer and like performer of the original song, but then also having a new idea or reinvention. A lot, a lot of times artists choose to choose another genre or introduce new instrumentation or even take a different tempo. And these are all really good um, variables and ways of uh, changing a song, which I definitely encourage makes a good cover song. Like, for example, this is not on our list because we tried to get songs that were not like, okay, everyone knows it. Like, for instance, I love Creedence Clearwater Revival. I love Marvin Gaye. Talk about I Heard It Through the Grapevine. Both songs are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you might have a preference for one over the other, but Marvin Gaye's original is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Creedence Clearwater Revival off of Cosmos Factory, that's a complete jam that goes on for like 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's the one I knew first. Mm -hmm. That's not on the list, but they really make it theirs. Yeah, and it's funny how it works that way, because sometimes the cover becomes even more popular than the original song. Like, that's as, true. Like, literally like all of early Beatles. <laughs> like, well, I want to hold your hand. Here's, like, here's, a, here's, a, <laughs> here's a for instance. Um, she came in through the bathroom window. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, Why would you read Joe Cocker that? actually, that actually became a bigger hit mm -hmm. with him than off the Beatles B side, which is just kind of like part of their medley. Yeah. So that's that's an example, and what a, what a change that is. I'm not sure if that's on our list, but but then again, people know that one, right? Oh, Joe Cocker's little help for my friends. That's oh, de like probably better. Um. And Nancy uh, is uh, just loves music, and uh, you're, uh, what do you do at your radio station? <laughs> what do I do at my radio station? Well, I train the DJs. I'm the program manager. So I am the program manager at uh, 91.3 WTSR at the College of New Jersey. We are a uh, educational, non-commercial radio station, so we're all student-run, and we offer a variety. Feed your mind. Open your mind. Open your oh mind. Oh my gosh, you have it on a sweatshirt. You should know this. That's true. <laughs> But basically, my role is to develop the schedule of all the shows, which we have a lot of dayside shows, which introduces like the music from our promoters that we'd like to incorporate, and just our branding of like what our sound is, which is basically like indie psychedelic, literally anything. Really, and anything. Anything. Would you play my old punk band? No. Moho Man. Anyway, <laughs> well, maybe we'll, 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 talk, we'll talk. You could be listed as a local. Oh my God! You um, play Cuckoo? No, not that one. That's bad. <laughs> it's real bad. You make me barf, you might play. Okay, sure. Anyway, and then I also train DJs, but that's the besides the fact. Um, I'm also a music minor, so I know a thing or two about music theory. And I just know how to rock. Uh, so uh, we're going to do a few songs. Uh, we have way too many here um, on our Spotify mix. But Nancy's going to take some. I'll take some, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. All right, so Nance, what did you what did you find? Gosh, this is kind of stressful. Which one's the cheese? It's just so much. Yeah. So this is uh, Bizarre Love Triangle, which Ooh. was ori originally done by New Order. Uh, but there is a very popular series um, called Scott Bradley's Postmodern Jukebox, who actually does a variety of of covers and they're really cool covers and like that's basically his thing and it's all reimagined and so I first discovered them through a couple of friends who were like like doing like renditions of those songs in their style and a big thing that Scott Bradley does is that he takes a song that we know but then he makes it like a completely different like vibe so like um, I, I remember like, you know, Sia's Chandelier was done by like the Sad Clown or something and it was like a whole different like operatic style almost. The New Order is a very like techno kind of upbeat. Like, Love them. Like, awesome. I got you into them. You did. Yep. And then, uh, but this cover is very kind of like, it's almost like, it's like a little bluesy and it's, it's very kind of like, and it's sung by a woman and it's a bit more of a, well, I'm actually thinking of, um. 
I'm actually thinking of the Life on Mars cover, which is, they're both kind of a similar style, but this Bizarre Love Triangle is a lot more like, kind of like, it's just a girl and a ukulele, I believe. And it's a just- A girl and a ukulele doing Bizarre Love like Triangle? It's, it's been a while since I've listened I'm to it. I'm gonna have to listen to this but, one. And it's just very, just like chill, and it almost feels like coffee, like coffee shop music. And it's just, and it's suddenly, like, I realized with this version, I suddenly started to know the lyrics a bit more. And it, cause like, and like with the New Order, the lyrics kind of don't matter. Yeah, it's like so, an R.E.M. song. Yeah. Until you look at the lyrics. Yeah. And that's like, wow, they do matter. And like suddenly you can start singing along instead of just like dancing. You right. Know? Oh, I like to dance. Oh, of course. But you know what, Nancy, you are opening my mind. <laughs> it's my job. It's your job. Okay, I got one now. Okay. Okay. You like this one. Cake. I will survive. Oh. You know, you gotta love cake, right? You're going the distance, uh, short skirt, long jacket, but I will survive, Gloria Gaynor, right? It's crazy. It's such a fun, it's such a fun rendition. At first I was afraid, I was petrified. You know, it's just such a, how would you, how would you, like. It takes down the tempo of it. It does bring down and the it's tempo. it's just like. It's a bit more like rugged mm -hmm. rather than like, I, even like you wonder about the tone of like who's speaking this. Cause like Gloria right. Gaynor seems really like she's gone through shit, but she's like got her mind yeah. back. I will survive. Yeah. It's much yeah. more disco, much more. And this just. And like, he almost seems a little like. Is he really surviving? Is he? Yeah. I, I feel like Gloria Gaynor's surviving a bit more than cake Than is. cake. Yeah. Yeah. But I really like that cake oh, song. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So, um. Where, Nancy, where are you going to go next? So, I'm going to do um, Dear Prudence by Suki and the Banshees. Um, so, of course, this is a Beatles song. And uh, originally the Beatles. Yeah, off the um, White Album. The White Album. and Second song. Okay. Uh, which side? First side after Back in the USSR. Okay. Uh, so, with this song, it's like, it's a, I feel like a lot of, it's a lot more just kind of like, hazy and I and it's kind of like it's like it feels very much like a vibe I like for lack of a better like ter terminology um but I find like it's like dear I, I mean the original dear prudence is also like that but something unique about this is the instrumentation I feel at the beginning I feel like we almost no I like this song a lot yeah I listened to this before and I'm like, like yeah I feel like we should actually like kind of show little clips of the songs can we do oh, that though it. like like edited yeah I don't know if, uh, if the FCC will allow that yeah, but I mean, like, I feel like... I don't yeah, know. I know. But I'll, well, I'll, but I'll have the... Uh, they can go to our list, mm -hmm. and when this goes online, we can have clips of it. That's fair. That's okay. Fair. You know what? I, ha I, can't, I can't believe I'm saying this. Hazy Shade of Winter, The Bangles. Wow. I actually like their version better... Really? ...than uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Ooh. I do it's, it's, it's... The tempo goes up. Mm-hmm. Um, I love both versions so much, but for some reason, and I think I, I think I knew the Bangles version weirdly before I knew the Simon and Garfunkel, Hazy Shade of Winter. Um, I, I know I'm going to be uh, tossed out of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for saying Bangles over Simon and Garfunkel, but I cool. think the Bangles do a very good job of Hazy Shade of Winter. Wow, supporting um, an all-girl band? You gotta support <laughs> the ladies. You gotta support the ladies. So what are you going with next? Okay, so I feel like Bob Dylan is honestly most well-known for being, co like, co like, covered. Oh my God. So Like, I'm, people like... I love Dylan. I mm -hmm. love straight-up Dylan. Mm -hmm. And I love, like, the cover versions of Dylan. Yeah. Like along the watchtower, is that what you're gonna go with? No, because that's that one is so let popular. Me, let me continue. So, <laughs> with uh, Bob Dylan, I mean, I know many people. I mean, he's a wonderful songwriter, but some people don't like his voice. I mean, that's why he's covered so much. Well, he has a but, Nobel Prize in literature. That's fair. That he almost refused. Well, but yeah. um, okay, let me continue. So, <laughs> my um, be. So I'm going to talk about Marianne Faithfuls. Uh, it's all over now, Baby Ooh. Blue, and it's like. I really enjoyed this because it's just like, ah, Marion Faithful's voice is just so like smooth and it's just like, and she has a, also a very low register and this song was also done um, when she was older. So it's a little like, um, so what was the song? Um, it is the season, oh like, um, As Tears Go By. As Tears Go and, By. Like, I'm familiar with that. 
which this is also is the season which is also a cover yeah yeah that's also a cover of rolling stones so you know is that I like, the same person who does it yeah mary faith yeah yeah um, and oh, I, I love that version of hers. So I almost feel like it's really cool hearing this. And I think I think when she does this song, like she's a bit older, and you definitely hear in her voice it feels a little lower and a little like it's more sultry. And I just and I am I appreciate um, just like the change in tempo. Like these are common things that you see in like cover updates. Yeah. All right, good. I'm gonna go. Okay, I saw this band live. Um, it was, we were, my wife and I, we were seeing uh, Van Morrison, it was like the Outlaw, um, and it was a, um, and it was a whole b bunch of bands, uh, Willie Nelson also, but there was this uh, bluegrass band, and my wife loves banjo music, I mean, she's learning the banjo, mm -hmm. and it's this, it's this band called Green Sky Bluegrass, if you don't know this band, check them out, right, mm -hmm. and they opened, right, I didn't even know about them. They started They started with Pink Floyd's Time. Imagine like a seven or eight piece band doing Pink Floyd's Time. Taking away the moments that make up a dull day, right? But put banjo in it and put all these different instruments in it. That's what I was it, in like tears listening yeah. to this. I, I enjoyed that band and their set more than I enjoyed, uh, you know... The, what's his name? The Belfast Cowboy. He was a little grumpy. I love Ann Morrison, but he was a little grumpy that night. And Willie Nelson's great. I actually liked Willie Nelson's uh, son, his set, a little bit better. I don't know, Willie Nelson's up there, but it was all good. But, and then my wife turned turned totally into this band, and she has a mix of, like, of their albums, and we just listen to them. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So time. They also have a great version of A Day in the Life from the Beatles, they also cover Road to Nowhere by the Talking Heads. Oh. And it's, it's really fun. It almost feels a little bit more like, yeah, we're happy about not knowing where we're going. What? Right. So, well, even the Talking Heads sound that way, too. That's fair. But less maniacal. Superstar by Sonic Youth. Oh, I was just about to talk about that. Really? One. Yeah. Do you want to take it? No. Well, the reason I actually heard this one before their, the Carpenters version. And I really, like, I actually heard it through the Ju Juno soundtrack, which yeah. is still, like, one yep. of my favorite movie soundtracks. Great soundtrack. Yeah. What happened to that sound? That folky kind of... It's still here. You just it, don't listen to it, new music. Well, no, but is it still here? Because yeah. that was really, really in. What do you mean, folky? Sonic Youth? No, not... Well, that, that <laughs> whole sound of, like... I don't know. How, how would you call that sound of Juno? You had, like... If I was a power and a fine entry, I'm dying on the band, I'm dying on the band. You know, you know like, Bell and Sebastian do a bunch of that. And yeah. Like, I mean, they're still around. Yeah, they're still around, but... And I think a lot of, like, you actually hear a lot of that sound at the radio station. Okay. And Maybe so, I'm just an old guy. I Love You Too, Where the Streets Have No Name is a great song. However, I'm also a huge fan, and I've seen them three times, of the Pet Shop Boys. Yes, the Pet Shop Boys. Mm. They're still They're still big in Europe. They still rock. I love their sound. And I love their rendition of Where the Streets Have No Name. I don't think they actually had permission to do it. <laughs> and and then they go into, I love you, baby. So they go into this which whole is, other uh, medley. Which is Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Yeah, Sons. which they totally change. But man, it is such a good, it's such a good song. I actually have no idea how I found this. But it's um it's a cover of the Buzzcocks Ever Fallen in Love, which mm. you might be familiar with from the Shrek soundtrack. Which really? Shrek soundtrack. Buzzcocks sucks. are punk, right? Yeah. But this is kind of like a kind of uh it's by Nouvelle Vague and Melanie Payne. And it's kind of like it has kind of like a a poppy kind of like nineties like female pop rock sound of like and it's also a little like Almost sounds a little Parisian, too, if that makes sense. Parisian. I, I'm, I'm throwing a lot of terms here. Yeah, that's but okay. I'd say it's a very kind of, like, it's more bubbly and, like, and the, a little bit more danceable than rockable. And I like, I and, like, they actually, I've heard a couple um, covers by this group, and it's, I definitely feel it's, like, a refreshing What's, what's the group again? Uh, Nouvelle Vague. Nouvelle Vague? I mean, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go here back to my youth. Um, Creedence Clearwater Revival was really the band I grew up with, both with my dad and my Uncle Ron and my Uncle Steve. Um, Lead Belly did the original 
Midnight Special uh, in 1946, I think. But, man, Creedence really... And the Midnight Special is the train that carried the, like, the prisoners. And Creedence Clearwater Revival off Willie and the Poor Boys. Such, such a great, such a great cover. And I remember my dad, you know, like, singing the song. Uh, with all his heart. Now he's not a great singer, but he's not a bad. He's not a poor singer, but he had enthusiasm. No, when he was, yeah, he would sing, and he oh. loved Creedence Clearwater Revival, mm -hmm. Creedence and uh, the Beach Boys. Okay, so this was a song they discovered through the movie Captain Fantastic, which is kind of like an indie film with like Viggo Mortensen, who is Aragon in Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. and so it's a cover of Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. Wow, and it's by Taken by Trees, and it's like. It's like, it's almost like um, Sweet Child of Mine Unplugged. Like, it's a very much more kind of, like, acoustic, um, like, forced nymph vibe. <laughs> and, like, and there's also, towards the end of it, they, like, do more of a refrain. Um, like, and they, they extend the refrain, and they have, like, a couple, like, what sound like reed pipes and, like, a, like a duet between two girls. And it's, like, and they just kind of, like continue like sweet sweet like so, like sweet child of i like all that and okay. so it's really cool i think like it's a it's a neat sound and like there's more piano than like let's say electric guitar right so i'm gonna go with uh you know i i my friend dan norbury got me into uh in into this band the bonnet femmes which was uh, big in the late like uh late 80s mm -hmm. um gone daddy gone but i love Narls barkley his version. Uh, and it was pretty popular a few uh, years ago on his album, St. Elsewhere. Uh, it's a really good video, too. It's really funny. But uh, it's only 2 minutes, 28 seconds. A lot of fun. And they, I think they he juices up the tempo a little bit. So it's even more... Um, it's a little funkier, too. It has a little mm -hmm. more funky, funky, funkier sound. Mm -hmm. Since we're on the topic of Gnarls Barkley, have you, are you familiar with... Um... I think like I forget the ter I forget their name, but it's like two brothers who do like um, YouTube reviews, and it's like the first time they hear a song, and then it's like they like and they do these different songs, and it's like a reaction as they're listening to it, and it's it's very like I think it's like twins, the new. No, oh, I haven't heard like of those that. dudes. They're really cool, and I know they do one of Crazy by Gloria okay. Sparkly. Oh, and it's Crazy like, is good. Yeah, it's it's neat. It's almost like. Look, listening to it for the first time again yourself, like okay. seeing their reaction. I don't want to listen to them because I'll be jealous, and I don't want to be jealous and hate them. Okay. I don't know whether to do "I Fought the Law" by the Clash. Is that too well known? I don't know who's who's it originally done by. Uh, the Bobby, the Bobby Fuller Four. "I Fought the Law," nineteen sixty three. Think about where that's going, mm -hmm. right? This is before the crazy sixties. We're still kind of like in the fifties here, but the Clash. Uh, it wasn't off the Clash's first. It it wasn't on the 1977 debut Clash album. It 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 was placed as the last song on the USA version. And when I listened to the UK version, I'm like, I want I Fought the Law to end that side A. But man, what a what a great song! And you know what I just realized? Um, I was listening the other day, and I was I was reviewing the Clash. There's a uh, Dead Kennedy song called I Fought the Law, right? They redo it. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend this cover. And they say, I fought the law and I won. Come on. I think you missed the point, Dead Kennedys. And then they say, I wanted sex. And I'm like, come on, Dead Kennedys. I get it, mm -hmm. right? A Rocky Raccoon. Oh, my goodness. We're going back to the Beatles. Harry Pockets and George Crikes. Yeah, uh, this is actually recommended... Uh, uh, through uh, shout out to Brian, Brian, <laughs> uh, it's our daughter's uh, boyfriend. Yeah, and uh, hi Madeline. Hey Madeline. She was she also probably inspired this, but um, I used, to, I used to play that around the campfire. Yeah, with the I always I always liked the song because it has Nancy in it, and I always thought it was cool to hear a shout out. Um, but uh, not that I'd be cheating on Rocky Raccoon, of course. But um. I like. I One think, day in the Black Mountain Hills, off Dakota, they lived a young boy named Rocky Raccoon. Okay. So with this song, it's uh, I I really like. I haven't listened to it in a while, like most of these songs, but uh, it doesn't hurt my credibility. Still remember it. Um, Rocky Raccoon is a. It's cool because like, 
I feel like it's very similar, but it's a little bit more funky than like Beatles do in country, which also is this is from the White Album, right? So it's kind of the attic. It's the attic of all albums. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend listening to it. I think well, it's, what's so different about it? Because I remember listening to it, and it is different. But yeah. it's been a couple weeks. I think just the vocals, like, and it's just a little bit. I feel like he doesn't take it as seriously. Where like the Beatles are maybe the Beatles feel a little tongue in cheek. Like this is like a Wild West, like, like or like a like a, a like a ragtime like yeah. like little trial like which like ragtime is New Orleans, not Wild West. But, um, no, I, I know what you mean. But then this one feels a little bit more, uh, I guess, folksy and a bit more like, um, I don't know, just a little bit more like maybe funky too. Just a little bit like, and like there's some scatting too. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like in order to, and I just want to say this, like in order to like fully compare these songs, like it'd be helpful to see like the sheet music of it but i mean to like the general audience they're not necessarily doing that it's not necessarily right available. that's true and even just like looking at the techniques of it all so right um i think i might want to do just one more uh two more real fast just real fast mm -hmm. just shout outs to the white stripes stop breaking down it's such a great song it's off i think their first album mm -hmm. uh it's it's like two minutes like two minutes 20 minutes and then Grown So Ugly, Black Keys. I mean, two bands that I really love so much. Both in the same kind of like, you know, bluesy, guitar, clapton -y, you know, just so good. Grown So Ugly off of Rubber Factory. I had no idea uh, both of those songs were covers. Um, but And they're both short. Uh, any other, uh, other song you want to... I think that wraps it up. Are you good? Okay. Man, I could keep going on here. But uh, take care, everyone. Thanks for listening. And maybe uh, we'll do this again because this was so much fun.